cyberspace. So I'm really sorry that I haven't made a video in a while. Um, two Wednesdays ago, I was busy um, at a book signing, actually. Yeah, I got to meet Patrick Rothfuss. It was so cool. It was amazing. He is hysterically funny. I got all my books signed and I got to talk to him about Firefly for a little bit, which was really cool. And I got to talk about one of my theories that I have about his books and he was like, well, I can't say if you're right or wrong because that would be a spoiler, but I will say that you are a very good reader. So I was like, yes! So that was like really exciting and like really cool and it's just like, oh my god, I met Patrick Rothfuss. I could like die happy other than, you know, meeting James A. Owen. So that was two Wednesdays ago and then last Wednesday was spring break and um, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna make any excuses. Honestly, I was just too lazy to make a video last week. But you're getting a video this week and it's a book review. Yay! It's not actually The Wise Man's Fear book review that I've been promising to you. Um, I did actually finish Wise Men's Fear like a week after I got it, um, like the day before the book signing. So um, it was an amazing book, but um, I want to reread it before I make a book review because I think if I made a book review now, it would just be me like squeeing about it and going, amazing, perfection, wee, and just like random strong adjectives, you know. So we're going to wait on that book review until, you know, I've completely intaken that. And uh, this week, I'm going to do a book review on George R. R. Martin's book, um, A Game of Thrones, which is the first book in the Song of Ice and Fire series. I've actually read it before. I read the first book, and I started reading the second book, and I was like, yeah, this is really good. I like it. It's epic fantasy. It's right down, you know, it's right up my alley. Um, but I, I wasn't sure of it. I wasn't, you know, yes, I love this. It's amazing. But I just finished rereading it. Oh my god. I love it. But at the same time... I hate it. And here's why. George R. R. Martin is a clever author. He's completely brilliant, but he's crafty. And he knows how to tell a story so well. This story that can just suck you in and like seriously like consume you. It's all you can think about. It's all you can talk about for the entire time you're reading this book because he's he just draws you in. The plot that he's created, it's amazing. It has these twists and turns and these unexpected shifts that take it in a completely different direction from where you thought it was going. He writes these glittering descriptions of this world that he's created. I mean, you can tell he spent, you know, hours and hours of world building on this. His descriptions of it, of the places, of the, the people in it, of the cultures and stuff. Oh, they're so rich and so full. Just these descriptions, they're amazing. I mean, seriously, like, if I could write like that, I'd be in heaven. But this world that he's created would be nothing without the characters that, you know, he's created to populate it. Um, and these characters are... They're, they're the whole range. They get the whole spectrum of characters. You have your good guys and your bad guys and your really, really evil guys and your gray area characters who are kind of good but kind of bad and the bad characters that you love to hate. I mean, you get every possible character in these books. And this is kind of where the love-hate relationship with this book comes because George R. R. Martin writes in point of view style. Each chapter goes to a different character's point of view. And it's not in first person, it's, it's definitely in third person, thank God. But it's it shifts which character you're following around. It's absolutely necessary to do this. I mean, the, the, the story is spread out across this whole wide world. So there's really no other way to tell it without flip-flopping between the characters. One moment you can be with my personal favorite character, Jon Snow, on the wall in the north fighting these supernatural monster things. And then on the next page, you can be with one of my least favorite characters, Catelyn Stark, in the more centrally located Riverlands, fighting this war against the Lannisters. And then the next chapter, you can be on a completely different continent with uh, Daenerys, Dan Danny. I don't know how to say her full name. She's just Danny. Um, on a completely different continent in um, the Dothraki grasslands. So this is the love hate. And you get to read these characters that you love, but at the same time, you have to deal with the characters that maybe you don't like as much. You know, in regular books, that's different. You kind of have the bad with the good. Either they're all traveling together or they're all in the same place, you know. You can deal with Harry Potter because Hermione's there and her to, you know, temper it. But with this, it's kind of, you know, different. You you get to read about Tyrion Lannister and, you know, he's this crafty little dwarf and he's awesome. I love him. Um, and, you know, how he manipulates people with his words because he can't, you know, physically, you know, defend himself. But then you have to deal with Sansa and her bubble-headed, air-headed simperings. So um, it's good, but at the same time, it's bad. See the 
love, hate. But despite all this, I mean, like, overall, I really do love this book. The world is beautiful, it's beautifully crafted, the characters are exquisite, the plot twists magnificently. The core of the story is Ned's story. Um, Ned, uh, Eddard Stark, Ned. Um, he's this man of honor, he gets asked by the king to come help the king rule the, rule the continent because the king can't do it alone anymore. And um, Ned is like, well, I really don't want to, but he does what is honorable and what he thinks is right. And he goes south with the king to help rule. And he discovers something about the queen, and I'm not going to spoil it, but um, he has to make this choice between telling the king what the queen is doing or not telling the king that's not the right thing, that's not the honorable thing. So he has to make this huge, like, moral and honorable dilemma um, and that's kind of like the central core of the story, but then it becomes so much more than that. It becomes about all these families fighting each other. It becomes, you know, the Starks versus the Lannisters, all making power plays for the throne. And, you know, um, Viserys and his sister Danny are over on, in the Free Cities and they're making a play for the throne. It's theirs by right. Um, the current king usurped it from them, so they're kind of desperately grasping for the throne. And then you have the Lannisters who are coldly calculating and doing everything planned out methodically to get the throne. You have the Starks who they really don't want to, they don't want the throne, they don't want to be king, but they're kind of forced into this conflict and then they have to play or they have to die. And of course then you have Night's Watch, uh, the Black Brothers on the wall who obviously they have nothing to do with the throne, but they're trying to get the all the rest of the men to understand, you know, don't fight each other, there's something coming. Winter is coming, these monsters are waking up above, beyond the wall, they're coming south, you know, there's supernatural stuff going on. You can't be fighting each other while this is going, and no one wants to listen to the Night's Watch, even though, you know, theirs is the conflict that's obviously, you know, the biggest one, the most earth-shattering. It becomes this huge epic that has so many plots, but they all make sense, they all tie in together, and they're all tightly knit, and it's so brilliantly written. Um, the other exciting thing about this, uh, HBO is making a miniseries, I think it's 10 episodes, and it's starting April 17th. And I'm so freaking excited about that. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Um, they've got some really awesome actors. Sean Bean is playing Ned. Oh my god, cannot wait for that. The love of my life, Harry Lloyd, um, who is probably unknown to everybody, but he was Will Scarlet in the BBC Robin Hood, and I have loved him ever since. He's playing Viserys, who is a little bit of vermin vomit, but, oh my god, he's gonna be amazing. Peter Dinklage is Tyrion, it's gonna be so good! But there's this huge cast of all these awesome people, and it's gonna be amazing, and I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see the sets, I can't wait to see the characters, and how they brought them to life, and oh, it's gonna be amazing. So I can't wait for that, and I also can't wait to read the sequel, uh, Clash of Kings, because obviously this is a sweeping epic, there's more than one book. Um, there, we're up to four in the series currently, so it's A Game of Thrones is the first one, then there's Clash of Kings, Storm of Swords, and Feast for Crows. Um, the fifth book, Dance with Dragons, is finally coming out. Finally. I say finally because we've been waiting five years for it. Something about George R. R. Martin that you should know. It takes him years between books to come out with the next one. Um, and the worst thing is he already had Dance with Dragons written, um, but he decided to rewrite chunks of it and edit, and five years later we're finally getting it. <laughs> There's two more things you should know about George R. R. Martin if you want to get into this. The books are hugely long. Um, the first one is 800 some pages and all the others are close to a thousand. And the last thing you need to know if you really want to start reading these is that George R. R. Martin has no qualms whatsoever about killing off his characters. It's kind of become a joke in my family because we all get so attached to these characters and we love them so much. These books for us, they're a study in grief and uh, <laughs> we cry <laughs> through like half the book because all of, our, all of our favorite characters are dying. Don't, you know, get attached to anybody because they might end up dead in the next book. But despite all of this, these books are so, so good. So if you like epic fantasy and you are over 16, you should definitely check these out because they're so good and the HBO series is going to be so freaking amazing. So now that this video has run on for an insanely long amount of time, this is what happens when you get me started talking about books that I love. It just keeps going and I ramble and I should stop. So um, I will keep being nerdy and squeeing over George R. R. Martin and crazy epic fantasies that are huge and time consuming to read. I will keep being nerdy. You keep being nerdy. And I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye!